Hey guys, what's up? This is Evan from Stock Music Musician. And in this video, I want to share a tip I saw posted on Reason Studio Users by Steve Save, aka Karma Farm. I saw this pop up and I just thought it was a super helpful tip. It had never occurred to me before. And I think this is really going to be something you enjoy. I spoke with Steve about sharing this tip with you all and he was totally cool about it. So let's give a shout out to Steve and also to the Facebook group group Reason Studio users. I'll put a link down below if you want to join it. This tip is all about how you can unlock a lot more power of the alligator, which is a really cool device in Reason. It basically chops up and filters loops or whatever you want to put through it, any instrument. It's a gator in other words, AKA the name alligator. Uh, but the problem with it is that it has only 64 preset patterns to it and that prevents you from really going all in and doing more creative gating but steve shared a really cool tip for how to take that and make it much smoother uh, and do it in a more modern way so shout out to him and let's hop into the tip the way this video is going to be structured is first i'm just going to give you a high level overview of alligator then i'm going to talk to you about the basic 1.0 way of doing this trick then i'm going to show you the kind of average like cool way of doing this trick and then i'm going to show you an advanced way of doing this trick that could add even more groove to your tracks so let's just start out we're going to play this is just really i've just taken a loop and made a simple drum beat so let's just listen to it without any alligator on for a second just so you can hear where we're starting from And now let's turn on alligator just so you can hear kind of what its default setting is. Then we'll start walking through alligator. So now this is what it sounds like with alligator processing the roads loop. So on the left here, what makes the alligator really work is this pattern that goes through. Basically what it does is it turns on one of three gates, high frequency, middle frequency, and low frequency. And when the gate is on, sound passes through it. And when it's off, sound does not pass through it. And so how these gates are turned on and off is controlled by this setting right here. These numbers are the different patterns. You'll notice as I switch this around, the patterns start to change. You can turn the patterns on for shuffle, uh, you can also, the speed at which they play. So now let's listen with just a different pattern at a different speed. And if we turn off the pattern, we're not going to hear anything because all of the gates will be closed. They're only open when the light's on. So let's listen. So you can still manually trigger them. You could program them in here if you wanted to. That would be really kind of a pain, but you know, you could map it to your keyboard and do something like that. Uh, but what I'm gonna show you are a much cooler set of tricks uh, in a second. What I do wanna let you know is that if you wanna really learn all about Reason, I've got this really handy Reason cheat sheet. There's a free link to, down below to download it and it's gonna walk you through all of the devices in reason there's tons of them and it's going to give you a quick sentence or two description of them so you know exactly what everything can do so after it goes through the gate for each frequency uh, there's filtering and then you can apply drive de phasing uh, delay panning and then just the overall volume and then these controls down here affect everything else uh, sort of how the filter works how the delay works how the uh, phaser is set. So the cool thing that um, I had recognized from a while ago is that if you hit tap, you can put, uh, use CV to control the gates, each of these gates. So I'm going to show you the 1.0 way of doing this, which is to just use the old school matrix pa pattern sequencer. So um, you'd use the gate CV out of the matrix to the gate in of 
the alligator. And if you wanted to control multiple gates, with you probably need to set up multiple matrices so that each one would provide a different pattern for the alligator. But I just want to show this really simply. This is the default pattern, so let's just, it's going to be coming now from the matrix and only turning on the highest gate. still very cool and you could do stuff like tie these together so that it's the gates are longer you could turn some of them off whatever you want so that's the 1.0 way of doing it and you can you know have multiple matrices to control your alligator but this is a, in terms of workflow, isn't like wonderful. It's fine. Um, there are more advanced CV plugins out there that you could use to create an even better pattern. But there are also lots of players in Reason that allow you to do much more advanced programming. So I'm going to show you a few of them. Uh, but this is where I had had the initial disconnect is that players by default aren't doing CV output. Instead, they're doing MIDI output, which is a thing you can't really control in Reason. You can't, by default, just plug in a player. So instead, we're going to use a player. And like, you could use, for example, the drum sequencer. So by default, the drum sequencer is going to be patched into the piano. Which is not what we want. So what we have to do is mute the piano and then go reach in the back here and manually use the gates from the drum sequencer to control the alligator. And so now if we were to hit play, we'll just be triggering the first one. So that's the first channel, but then we've got the snare and the hi-hat here, right? So we could do... I mean, that's not what they really are. Instead, they are now gates going out of channel two. Gate two to gate two, gate three to gate three. But this, to me, from a workflow perspective, is just so much easier visually and so much faster to program than the Matrix or other programs. And like with the drum sequencer, for example, you've got access to like the repeat section here. So we can do like trilled out parts. You've got the probability. So things aren't always going to trigger. You could make this one a little behind the beat and we could turn on the shuffle amount. So now let's listen. Yes, and it is responsive to velocity, by the way, in case you weren't clear. So this is like a really cool and easy way to flip a sample by just programming in your own rhythms on top. Let's try just, a, I want to show you a few other players and how you can get cool, other interesting results. So like we could use, for example, okay, I'll drag it in. We could use the uh, baseline generator here. Now, there's only one gate out, but, you know, there's these other ones here that also are going to do stuff. So um, let's just see what happens. It's limited by your creativity. We could try, you know, pattern mutator, quad note generator, electric pandas, compulsion sequencer. 
um, Euclidean Rhythms by a Robotic Bean. No, it looks like you can't. It looks like this one doesn't have a gate out. And this is where I initially got really stymied because I wasn't expecting everything to have a gate. Uh, or when the initial things didn't have gates, when the initial players didn't have gates, I just kind of gave up on the idea. Um, but yeah, this is super powerful. Uh, we could use also, you know, there's a lot we could use. Experiment and you'll get good results. But the 3.0 way of doing this, and this is a way I had used it in the past, is to use CV voltage from your drums, right? If you're using something like a Kong or a redrum, each of these drum channels is gonna have a gate out. So we'll take the kick to gate, we'll put you on the low end actually, kind of match it up. The snare is on channel four to the middle, and the hi-hats are on channel nine channel nine um and so now when each of these drum hits hits it's going to trigger one of the gates and this is going to give you that super groove where everything's going to be kind of locked up and synced together And so that's just a really cool, easy way to get your whole song grooving together. You know, and this will work. We can switch up the Rhodes thing and it'll sound cool everywhere. So a big shout out to Steve for inspiring this tip. I really hope you found this useful. Go check out that Reason user group. There's a lot of good ones on Facebook, but Reason Studio users is certainly uh, a keeper. And be sure to download that free Reason cheat sheet so you can get the most from your music uh, and the most from Reason, especially if you're just starting out. Thanks so much for watching. Catch you on the other side.